a beautiful story. I love what she's doing with them. It is 8.13 now. I'm joined by Kent Springer now. He's a former board president of the Broad Ripple Village Association. And we have him on this morning because a big vote last night. It was months in the making, but the IPS district did, uh, the board did vote to close Broad Ripple High School and change uh, Northwestern Arlington to middle schools. But right now you're talking about Broad Ripple High School, of course, yes. and the future of it. BRVA has come to accept the plans now. It's what's going to happen. Correct. Now you're trying to figure out what should happen to the school that is up for sale now. Exactly. You did a survey, so explain a little bit about the survey. Sure. We um, we actually held a community forum and had good response to that, but we also launched an online survey, and we got so between the two, we have over 600 people that responded through both of those avenues, and we started compiling that. We'll have the results released next week formally, but I can tell you high level what the community wants is they still want to see community reuse of the facility mm -hmm. versus some type of commercial or retail going into the facility. They really want to see a school is pretty much the predominant answer they want to see at the location or some type of community use, some use of the auditorium, some use of the gymnasium, and definitely some use of the football field track area. Okay, as a district that needs to make money, Right. They're going to want to get a good price for this, I would imagine. Do right. you foresee working with anyone in the future who could finance an operation like this to then give it back to the community? Well, I think they'll look for, I think potential developers or partners are going to look for someone that can package that together, whether it be a school that comes in there and that a school that can use all of that and then open it up to the community, because certainly a school could still function in the building. It's a great facility and has great amenities. They could op certainly open those up to the community, um, let the residents in the area use the track, let a theater group like the Phoenix Theater use the auditorium and have local productions in there. So I think working with us in the community on how the building is used in the in the future is really what we're looking for. It has such a long history of giving back to the community. Right. Uh, you walk inside and the stories are endless, what somebody can tell you about the architecture inside, the materials used. Right. I'm sure that's on the top of the list is preserving that history. It is. That's a lot of what we heard through this process is the legacy of the high school and trying to preserve that. The school's been there since the 1800s, so it's been a part of Bridal Village, and that's a lot of what we're trying to preserve here. Who will you present these survey results to to implore them to invest in this community again? Well the good part is we're working with IPS and we have worked with them for several months now. Um, they view us as the community partner mm -hmm. um, so they've asked us to gather this community input, input because they do want to work with the community going forward. So we will use part of this in the process as they release their RFP saying we're ready to sell or lease the building, this is what we'd like to see. So the people submitting bids, this is what we'd like to see in it. And then we will be involved as the bids actually come in mm -hmm. in reviewing and selecting the bids. Because you would certainly think that whoever bought this would want to do what the community will support, of course. But exactly. Can, thank you so much. And we'll look forward to those numbers coming out next week. Yes. Randy, good morning. Yeah, hey there, guys. And